Hi Desiree, I am very excited and it is an honor to be on your Actor Spotlight segment. All the best to you and all your audience. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much for that, Hawthorne. You are absolutely amazing, and it's such a pleasure to have you joining me here today. You have an incredible history, and for those who may not know, can you start by letting everybody know where you're from and how your acting career began? Well, I was born and raised in Chicago, and uh, how I started was, you know, well, I started doing, like, plays and stuff when I was in kindergarten. And, uh, and and then, you know, in, in grade school, they did a couple of things. And then high school, did some plays in Chicago. And and then when we moved to Michigan, my last two years of high school, I did, did a play. But when I went to college, uh, I was trying to – I went through a English and a um, music and an art major. And then I realized I know what I want to major in. And so I, I decided to major in theater. And I got my bachelor's in theater from Notre Dame and did uh, went to grad school. I uh, got my master's from the University of Michigan in theater. And then, uh, then I taught for two years at Illinois State University in the theater department. And then I had a choice. I knew I didn't want to teach. So uh, it was either go to New York or come to L.A. And all my friends had gone to, you know, people that I knew. I shouldn't say friends. People I knew had gone to New York. But I decided, because I had a girlfriend that, that uh, from when I was teaching at Illinois State, she moved to California to do her internship to finish her degree, her bachelor's degree. So I moved in with her in California. Because I figured if I could make it in New York, nobody in L.A. would know who you are. But if you did, <laughs> if you made it in L.A., you could always go to New York and work because everybody would know you. So that's how I went to this <laughs> place. And then I started working. You know, I had to had the regular nine to five job, put bread on the table, and started doing theater at the Inner City Cultural Center in L.A., which was run by C. Bernard Jackson. And uh, did theater, did get theater, you know, free theater. No, not even gas money. Doing two, three shows at a time there and, and, and at other places and on the road doing plays, et cetera. And some of the people that were producing and directing the plays started started you know, started producing and directing film. And that's how I got my first job. Uh my first film was The Disco Godfather with Rudy Ray Moore. It was a guy named Cliff Rockmore had uh, was doing the theater and he was working with Rudy. He 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 directed um uh, I think it was Petey Wheatstraw that, that Cliff directed. But then he wrote Disco Godfather, and he was producing Disco Godfather, and gave me a job as the lead bad guy. Oh, okay. Stinger Ray. <laughs> you had a great history in the film, and you're continuing to, to do great things. So how did you come about joining up with Mark Casey to do the movie Flint? Well, I had done uh, another film. Uh, a, a, a woman that I that I know, uh, Shakola, she she was producing some of this stuff, and I did. Uh, she had called me up and asked me if I could work on this other film. The first film that that, that, that where I met Mark, uh, Day of Trouble, and so she asked me if I could come in and do a role in that, and I did. You know, I did a day of that in there, and then um, and then you know, of course, she called me back later. A couple a year or two later, and said I'm doing this uh, Flint tale, and I, he had a role in it for me. And I thought it was just you know another one of those day two roles and stuff. I didn't know it was <laughs> the lead in, in the film <laughs> until I got the film and started reading. It. I said, wait a minute, this is more, this is more than I thought it was. But yeah, he called me up and asked me to do it. Okay, and so you are you playing the role of Chief Hartwell? Can you tell us a little bit about that role? Chief, is, uh, he was the chief of, he worked himself into um, the chief of the, te- uh, ch- uh, chief of the department, of the Flint Police Department. He'd been on the force for 25 years, a pretty hard-nosed guy, and then he gets framed for something, and he goes to jail. 
and he loses everything. And then he gets out uh, on a technicality, and uh, and then he starts reevaluating re-evalu- his life. To figure out, you know, trying to figure out how how big of a problem uh, discovers how big of a problem he was with himself and the people of Flint, and he's and he's trying to make atonement for that, for being the jerk that he was as a having that gun and a badge. At the mm. same time, trying to figure out who you know who set him up. So that's what this guy is. So there's a lot surrounding this film. I mean, with the controversy about the water, along with the the plot that you're telling me about, with how he, you know, seeking atonement, and things come kind of full circle for um, Chief Hartwell, who you play. So, why was this film important for you? Why was it important for you to do? Oh, it's extremely important because at this point in my life, these are the kind of films I, the only films I want to be doing. Uh, and I take films based on the content because it's, it's important for me to to talk about who we really are, who black people really are, as opposed to the way outsiders have seen us and have made us be to the rest of the world. And this film shows the struggle that we go through to to f- how do we fit into this system, why we fit into it. And how we can how we can finally manipulate and change the system. So that's what this film does for this character, for me, and it and it does for other people in the film. It's 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 uh, his daughters that he touches. You know, it's, it shows a relationship. It's the struggle between the two daughters, the struggle between his you know with his wife dying and 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 him picking up a new relationship because of all those struggles that, that go on in, in our day-to-day lives that are true struggles as opposed to this nonsense that we are, that, that, that we are constantly being told that we are. So that's why it's important to me. Okay, good, good. I love that. I love that you share that because a lot of things that are going on um, in this day and age, that of course they're relevant to um, black people as a whole, and people need to really pay attention to what movies have to say. So what do you want people to get from the film? What is the message? A message of of hope that, that we, see, black people have a tendency to say, well, we, we just a little bit of population. What can we do? We can't do nothing, you know, we stuff and all that blah, 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 blah. Yes, you can make a difference. (laughs) You know, uh, people make differences all the time. Individuals make make differences. Uh, Martin Luther King made a difference. You know, Malcolm X made a difference. You know, Harriet Tubman made made a difference. Individuals make make differences in our lives. And if we, we stop the negativity, stop talking about what we can't do, and start talking about what we can do, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I love that you said that. You know, stop, you know. Being an individual have to come together and do things collectively to get something um done, to see something happen. So I love that you said that. So the next question I have for you is, um, we all know you from the character Big Red Davis in the 1991 film of The Five Heartbeats. How do characters like that um, kind of relate to some of the characters you're playing now? Well, none of them relate to any of them. No more than any, than than John Blow relates to King Henry. (laughs) Other than the fact that they're, they're both human beings, they're separate entities. And so I take pride in the fact that everything that you ever see me do is that individual. It has nothing at all to do with anything you've seen before or anything you will see after. Because of creating real people on screen or on stage. So okay. that's going to relate. Hopefully. That's my goal. <laughs> right. And that's a great goal. That's a great goal. Because every character is different. So you bring out something different in every, you know, character that you play. Yeah. You know, I mean you can't change the skin that you're in, but you can change change vocal 
uh, tonality. You know, you can manipulate your voice in certain aspects. You can manipulate your body in certain aspects. You have different, you know, uh, patterns of, of everything, you know, as much as you can manipulate. That's what great actors do, and that's what I aspire to be. And that's right. You are one of those great actors. So what else can we expect from Hawthorne James? I mean, you're working on the movie Flit. What else is going on um, with you? Well, I'm doing a uh, a, a play. Uh, I did a play in Philly, and now he's supposed to be going to New York and maybe uh, down to Atlanta, uh, North Carolina, in Atlanta, and uh, just talk to him and talk to do other things. So we'll see what happens. Okay, great. Well, Hawthorne, James, it has been wonderful talking with you. You're doing incredible things, and everybody's looking forward to um, seeing what comes about with this film, Flint, and all the good things that you're going to be doing uh, from now into the years to come. Oh, thank you, Desiree.